My name is Richard Casper. I'm a Marine Corps veteran, and I teach the course here at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. This program started basically because after my injuries in war, I didn't know how to deal with myself. I came back, had a brain injury, my best friend was shot killed. I didn't know myself at that point. Art has helped me by giving me a chance to have a voice again. I used to not be able to leave my house. I couldn't go talk to people. I would physically throw up and get sick. If you could be 0%, that's committing suicide, 100% being the best you can be. After the Marine Corps, after being injured, I was at probably like a nine or a 10. And after this school, I was back to like 85% me. For people who may struggle like I did and didn't want to break out of the house and be like, I'm not sure if this is gonna work, I just want them to know my story and be able to come out here and learn with other combat vets how to do art. And if they're looking for one more way, if they just come out here and give me a chance, it's gonna be worth it. What we were aiming for is to express what we were dealing with, you know, when we were deployed and during our military career, where we literally get out of our element, go on this kind of like alternate reality to go back in time, think about what we went through and express it to other people. Just being exposed to different concepts of art, like at the museum and some of the contemporary art we saw, um, that's what influenced me to try doing a performance piece for my last project. The opportunity to be at the school was just phenomenal. It was amazing. We could, at lunch, we could go and wander the halls of the museums and that was, that was pretty awesome. I think the hardest part was actually talking about what I've been through with. It was easy talking to Richard because he is a combat veteran and he has been through stuff I've been through. And my job was to, you know, go find IEDs or find landmines or anti-personnel landmines and take them apart. And little did I know, I was putting that stuff inside me. At first, it's a little hard to let yourself become vulnerable. Um, you won't really know what to do right away. It takes a couple days. I know for me, it took a week. Being surrounded by a bunch of veterans that, like, know what combat feels like, knows the after effects of combat, knows how it feels to come home. It was really comfortable being here. They're gonna come to class like normal college students, treated like normal people, that know how to be like, I can be in college, I am a normal person, and I can live like everybody else lives. If even one of them chose to go to college and study art and has that artist brain to where it saved them, it's totally worth it. Hey, welcome everybody. I'm excited today. I have uh, quite a bit of work to do. <laughs> so we've been working on a set of, um, well it's a series of acrylic pores. I'm Mrs. Zoe F5. Um, you can find me streaming on Twitch. Uh, but I'm happy to be across all the platforms today, so welcome. Glad to have you with me. So this painting started out as an acrylic pour. We added some uh, lapis lazuli stones to it for some detail there. And then I used something called dimensional magic uh, to adhere those to the canvas and to give them that nice shine, right? We've got them in all of these corners. This painting's got some really nice details in it. And today I'm gonna use uh, acrylic paint markers and uh, add some more lines. So we're gonna do the line work today. How's everybody doing? I would love to hear what you all have been working on at some point. Lots of work going on. 
I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It has been uh, a little busy for me as well. But busy's good, right? It's been a, a heck of a year so far. <laughs> We've almost made it through. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, you know what? That work's got to get done too. all got to get done, right? Just got to see your way through it. So we have this painting to do. And then on this table over here, I have five others. And one of them is very cool. It's a painting requested uh, by a gentleman called Sergeant Squid. You can probably guess what, what he did. Uh, it's a red, white, and blue acrylic pour heart. And we're going to put uh, two phrases on it. One is, not all wounds are visible with an anchor and a PTSD ribbon. And the second one is not all who wander are lost with that same anchor and another PTS rib PTSD ribbon on it. So that'll be fun to do. So we're gonna get these details on this geode today. Then we're going to clear coat. Actually, let me zoom in a little bit for y'all so you can kind of see what I'm doing with this line work, at least part of it. Um, so we'll get those paintings clear coated. You'll get to see what the acrylic pores look like. And then we'll add the rest of those pieces to it. <laughs> But it's a pretty cool piece. I was really honored to be able to do it for him. And those words mean a lot. So it's always nice to do a, a painting for someone that I know has real meaning for them. It's my favorite thing. going through defining all of this right now. <coughs> really the painting. I think we're going to do a secondary line on this one. Just gonna follow that first line. If you've ever looked closely at a geode, there's all these really cool lines, rings, almost like tree rings, 
the rocks forming that it makes. And so we're just <laughs> creating those lines right now. Just following that natural flow of how the paint went. You can see how that line work with these acrylic paint markers immediately adds some dimension to this piece. Adds just a little bit more interest, I think. I'm just going to come in here with a little bit wider marker, a little thicker marker. We're going to add some of this blue to it. Excuse me. Hey, Britta Panda. How are you? We are going to get your uh, your painting clear coated today. So we'll be another step closer. To getting it done for you. Should probably explain this is not my real life daughter. <laughs> My daughter also streams on Twitch. 
and Brit the Panda moderates for her channel as well as mine and my husband. So she's the family mod. Look how that detail adds all of that depth. Isn't that cool? It's like a river of stone. See how that changes it? I love how that looks. I'm going to take this dark blue and I'm going to run right over the top of this gold over here. I want this blue to come up and meet this white so that we can define these two edges here. And I think we're going to do a second line on this one, too. So there's not just stone on this, but there's some metallic paints, some metallic glitters. I'm sure you can probably hear the pen traveling along the canvas, making all that gritty noise. It's this acrylic paint trying to go over the top of glitter and then the texture of the canvas as well. It's this brush tip catching on it. Because it's such a rough edge. Or such a rough texture. Hmm. 
There we go, that's very nice. Oh! Oh no. <sighs> ah, look at that. No cat hair. Yay. It's usually a death sentence for anything falling on the floor because of beta. Set it forward so you guys can see what I'm doing here. We're going to bring in some more white line work and then some light blue line work on the inside of this. We're going to see how that looks and then maybe slowly go a little darker. Not sure how well this is going to show up. The struggle. <clears throat> there we go. New pin. doesn't necessarily want to do what you want it to do. drink. I dropped another pen. I need to slow down and clear my head maybe. I'm trying to do too much too fast. <clears throat> Had a lot going on at work today. And I was really looking forward to getting to do this with you guys tonight. And I think I'm trying to rush myself. So sometimes it's good to just slow 
slow down, right? There's so much going on in your life. I feel like that's how it is for everyone I know right now. Like, there's just so many things happening. And even when you're doing something you love, it's a good time to slow down and maybe enjoy it a little bit instead of just rush through. Good time for me to take the advice I give to other people, isn't it? There we go. There's the heart of our geode now. Looks much more like a geode, right? This is a slice of carnelian. It was at one point a geode. Do you see all those lines? little dots as crystal formations. That's what we're going for. Right? That's what we're abstractly creating. If that's a word. Abstractly. I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> Just making up stuff. This pen is invisible, and I wish it weren't. Let's, um, let's see about this gold, maybe. Do a line of gold over here. Lapis lazuli is a, this color blue, primarily stone, but it's got gold and whites in it. So we tried to represent that in our pour. Flip this around. I'm going to work on this corner up here. I have to look at it upside down for a moment.
I'm gonna bring some more of this light blue in there. I'm gonna leave this corner and that corner as they are. This is a good practice in knowing when to stop because I could do this all night. I could fill this canvas with lines and then I would lose the beauty of the pour itself, right? What do you think? I think I think that is detail enough. I think leaving this side as it is, like that's gorgeous. Get all the lines that are already there. Almost looks like marble, right? And the same thing with these two, these two lines here. I love the, and I know you can't see the metallics, how they shine. I don't think I want to take away from that. So yeah, I think I'm gonna call that done. We're gonna clear coat it, but I have to let that acrylic, the acrylic paint markers take a minute to actually fully dry. So I'm gonna set this over here and let that dry for a minute. And uh, we're gonna put a clear coat on these other canvases. So, Sergeant Squid requested a red, white, and blue painting. He wanted an acrylic pour painting for the background of what we're going to do for him with the quotes on top of it. So we did this pour, and then as we were doing it, he was watching the live stream and he requested that we put uh, some drops here for the blood, sweat, and tears. That he's been through. which I happily did for him. I'm 
we're going to put this little clear coat on here, which is just Mod Podge. It'll dry perfectly clear. It's a matte finish. So we're going to put a uh, vinyl overlay of the lettering and the PTSD ribbons over the top of this. And by clear coating this with Mod Podge, the vinyl likes to stick to this much better than it does the acrylic paint on canvas. It just adheres better. And then once it's on here, uh, I'll do another clear coat of this on top of it to make sure that one, it's permanent. It should be permanent anyway, but just to make sure it's permanent. And two, as this painting is hanging up, uh, it shouldn't fade in the sun if it's exposed to sunlight. And uh, they're a lot easier to dust. You can use a wet rag on them. I mean, I wouldn't like spray water on it or anything, but does make them a lot more durable. And I definitely want this to last a long time for him. <laughs> and in the process of making that painting, we poured this one which I believe will probably go to uh, my husband, OEF5. He really likes it, and I think uh, he wants a Captain America on it. The silhouette, Captain America, in the center of this. So we'll get this one clear coated and ready for that. He hasn't picked out his design yet. that one dry. And then we have this guy. Which I kind of dig. Just wiped up a drop and dropped another drop on my desk. Looks a little bit like uh, Chaos, right? Looks a little bit like how my head feels some days to me. <laughs> You're just trying to keep it together. But there's so much going on. I'm 
such pretty colors together. I really like it. This started out as red, white, and blue. But as the colors commingled, you get that purple color. Some grays in there. <laughs> and this one is Brit the Panda's painting. So the geode, the lapis lazuli geode that we were working on, that series started with um, me doing a representation of malachite, which is a green stone, lots of green lines, dark, dark greens, light greens, all kinds of stuff. And every now and then you'll find some uh, copper or white flex in it. And then the second one in the series that we did was representative of amethyst, which is this one right here. Should have laid down the tarp. I was going to make this type of mess today. I'm not the tidiest of artists. I kind of like messes, if I'm honest. So <laughs> I try to protect my desk as much as possible from myself. job today at that.
But this desk was made in, you know, 1884, so I suppose a little extra clear coat's probably not going to hurt it, if I'm honest. It probably needs to be refinished altogether. But I'd rather it not be sporadic on my desktop. So we're not doing any other overlays or anything else on these geode paintings. We're just clear coating them to make sure that if whoever's house they end up in, <laughs> if they get cleaned or anything, that the painting itself doesn't get hurt and then it's able to retain this really nice bold color, even if it's exposed to sunlight. Anything that I do a vinyl overlay on, I clear coat. But once I started clear coating my own paintings that hang in my own house, I realized how much more durable they are, how much easier they are to clean, and I started just doing all of them. So I thought, if this is something I like, something that helps me, it'll probably help other people. So that's what we've done ever since. See if this bad boy is ready. We'll just have to be. We'll just have to be a little bit careful with it.
There we go. And I think that's all of them that need to be clear coated. See that? Doing a good job. All right. Let me go rinse this out. I'll be right back. <laughs> and we'll get started on. Uh, getting these words cut out. That went pretty quick, guys. I'm pretty happy about that. Let's uh, let's scoot you over here with me real quick. And look at getting this taken care of. So here's the phrase that we're going to put on this uh, 12 by 12 canvas. I think 11 inches will work. So I'm gonna grab some uh, black and teal vinyl. Hi, Navy. give myself enough room to be able to cut around that. Same thing with the ribbons. Yeah, you think so? I hope he likes it. Uh, we just clear coated it. And I clear coated it first because I clear coated uh, what I clear coat six different paintings. You want to see the lapis lazuli one? Did you get to see it? Is it still? It's still a little cloudy. I just put the clear coat on it. Um, okay, I'll pull it out and show you. Trying to find the right color for this PTSD ribbon because it's kind of a, a teal, a teal green color. I think that's about it, right? I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's pretty close. Let me find my <laughs> Let me find my mats over here. 
Do I only have one standard grip? Okay. That's fine. Oh. Let's move you over here because I forgot I have to make this purchase. So sorry. There you go, you can come back now, it's safe. <laughs> I have to put my password in for that. I was like, oh, you guys probably don't need to see that little bit. With the licensure. Um, Anytime I, I purchase an individual thing, I have to put in my password for it or approval or whatever. Here, I'll scoot you back over here and I'll get this, get this set up where you guys can see what I'm doing. But you guys don't wanna see my passwords, right? Nobody wants to see that. You just wanna see the fun stuff. <laughs> Am I zoomed in or zoomed out? There we go. You want shiny things, want fun things, right? It's still a little bit wet from the clear coat I put on it maybe, but here is the lapis with all of its lovely details in there. I think it turned out pretty nicely. I love this marbling that we've got over here. But yeah, it looks pretty good, right? You can kind of see the detail better if it's at a slant with the lights. It's so hard. There's so much to see in these paintings because they're so detailed. It's so hard for me to show. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, I have to cut some of this off. Yeah, I'm really pleased with how they're turning out. So we're gonna do the black first. Super sticky. Maybe you're familiar with messing with this stuff, aren't you? From your diamond paintings, where everything sticks to it. Yep. So we need a fine tip blade that's already in there. And we'll get this loaded up straight and let it cut out all of our little words and our little anchors. actually have the two colors. I have one that's a little darker. I really think this is the color. I think we're going to use this one because I think that's like exactly. Oh no, they're reusable. 
but they're only reusable to a certain point. So, for instance, this is a light grip. This is what I use for paper. And if you look at it, you'll see, obviously there's a black cat in this house, but you'll see tiny like flecks of glitter from glitter paper and fabric and hair from beta. Okay, look at it. Okay, it's awful, right? So these are to the point where they're almost not usable anymore, but they're still sticky. I mean, they still, they're still sticky. And I have taken them and washed them with Dawn dish soap and then let them dry. And they get, like they don't lose their sticky when you wash them. So I can wash that stuff off. But the problem is, is that eventually you've used them and used them and used them so much. Well, we got this machine for me in December um, and I've never bought new ones of these, so that's what I've used like every time that you've ever seen me use it, plus all the times I use it just by myself. And I've been through, um, at least 112 by 12 sheets of cardstock. So at least a hundred times there's been a piece of paper on one of these. Um, I've gone through three rolls of the black vinyl. I don't know how much, I went through two rolls of white. I don't know about all the other colors. <laughs> yeah, so, um, they're not cheap, but I bought a pack um, that gives you the light grip, a strong grip, that's a standard grip, and then this is fabric grip. So this one I use for fabric. Dan Hobbs is hosting, thank you, Dan. This one I use for chipboard or wood. <laughs> This one I use for paper, and I use that one for vinyl too, but I'm trying the strong grip tonight for vinyl because those are wore out. And I paid, um, I think I paid about 10 a piece for them. They're like 35 for four and then shipping, you know, something, something close to that. Oh, you didn't grab my stuff. Didn't grab your stuff? Your coat. I did not. It's okay. I forgot. I can go grab it. I still have everything out. It's okay. It's okay? It's okay. It's good. You're fine. My husband's back there in the doorway talking to us, chat. <laughs> What'd you miss? Uh, we finished up the details on the lapis lazuli geode. Uh, we clear coated six paintings. Hi. Um, and we are just now, um, getting this stuff cut for Sergeant Squid's painting for his PTSD sayings that he wanted. So we're getting those cut out. And then I hope that that clear coat is going to be uh, dry enough
for us to put these on there tonight. Because if it is, then we'll be able to put these on there and then do that second clear coat. <laughs> and maybe work on um, Brit the Pandas a little bit. You're going to get all the things done tonight. But we're going to see how far we can get. I was very optimistic about my time tonight. <laughs> and I'm always, you know, I either think I have too much to do and I end up with not enough, or I have not enough and I, I think I have not enough and I end up with too much. But it's all right, we get there, right? We get it figured out. I know you guys can't see where this is, but you'll be able to here in just a second. I've got all of my vinyl stored in the Ikea, like, grocery shopping bags, like, like the little plastic ones that you get, and a storage thing for those. <laughs> and it works fabulous for me to just be able to grab it, because I can see all the colors. Because I have... I don't know, 60 some colors left up there, I think. All right, you ready for the, the satisfying part? Does she? That's cool. Let's see if this will cooperate with us tonight or not. Cricut tools. Got paint all over everything. So here's our little PTSD ribbons. This is, what did I just do? Did I just put it away? I just cut that vinyl and then wrapped it up with the other vinyl and put it away. Is that what I did? I did. Exactly what I did. I guess I thought it was done and I didn't need that. <coughs> I meant to put this piece that hasn't been cut in there, but that's not what I did. I've seen the little, like, rolling cart stand that have like three trays on them that people put vinyl on. They're pretty cool. I don't have the floor space because I run around all the time. I 
And I like to keep the studio as clear as possible because I strongly suspect my cat might be trying to trip me so that I'll die because <laughs> he's evil. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this off in all one piece. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Almost there. I think we got it all. The way to the final. There we go. Take all these little bits out. <laughs> yeah, have you seen the little things that I put them in, Dan? The IKEA things? I got them sitting on top of my bookcases. There's four of them. And they hold um, 14 rolls a piece. <laughs> and then I have like this one that has multiple colors in each roll. This holds them like that. They hang on the wall. Yeah. It's like two rows of them. So like this has two colors in it. This has two tones in it. You know what I mean? That's got two tones in it. So they're easy for me to find. Because I can just grab them out. And I've got four of them. And they just sit on top of a bookcase. And if I want to pull one down and grab something, I can. But most of the time, I just reach up there and grab a roll out of it. So they're, it's all out of the way. But I can see everything I have the second I look at it. So I have one that's for uh, HTV vinyl. I have one for removable vinyl, one for two for permanent vinyl, right, so that I don't accidentally grab the wrong kind or, you know, whatever. And then the infusible inks and stuff like that I have on a shelf in the same bookcase. But I don't have to rifle through them and I don't worry about them getting bent or creased or anything because they're nice and rolled up. And I went through 
I don't know, four or five different solutions until I came to this one. Uh, but those things are only like six dollars at Ikea. <laughs> It's by far the cheapest solution I've tried, uh, and it's spectacular. I mean, because I could hang them like as a whole row up a wall and just grab stuff out if I wanted to, which would be really cool too, but I don't have any walls, excuse me, wall space that I wanted to give up for it. So, like I said, they just stand on top of the bookcase and it works great. Is this I where it's, it looks like it's where it's supposed to be. <coughs> All right. So the anchors. side for an anchor barely yeah exactly yeah you could they've got like super strong double stick tape on the backs of them and then they've got holes for screws or nails or whatever too There's one anchor and ribbon. I want them to look exact. This one's crooked. Okay. Better. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. 
because I zoomed in. Sorry. All right. So we need some transfer tape. that big will probably do it. <laughs> so transfer tape being a clear tape that I'm going to lay right over the top of this. And then I'm going to pick those letters up so that they're onto the sticky side of this transfer tape. I'm going to incorporate another, the other piece of the design in there. Not all wounds are visible goes right on the top. You know what? Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I was going to do that, but I'm not going to do that. Um, we're going to add that anchor and ribbon to the top of this quote. And then we're going to place it on the canvas. I'm going to line this up. So that when I place this on the canvas, it's going to uh, it's not what I want. It's going to be nice and straight on there. First, I'm going to make sure all these little letters are really stuck in the little dots of the eyes and everything are really stuck to this transfer tape. Then we're going to pick that up. <coughs> the, that's that one. All right. Make sure I got my little eye dots. So there's our first part. I have to fold this one handed. <laughs> Static. <laughs> Static is the enemy. Got it. 
Yay. Success. Now, making this stick to the canvas instead of the transfer tape is not always seamless. But we're gonna see how we do. We got the anchor and the ribbon down. Not all wounds are <coughs> visible. Such a true statement. I hope he likes this as much as I do. I really do. <laughs> Hey, Squid. Man, if you're not just the man of the best timing ever, look at what we're doing. Um. <coughs> Spies on the web. Your people ratting me out. <laughs> yeah, check it out. Halfway done. We got it clear coated today. Well, the first clear coat. We're going to get this put on here, and then we're going to clear, clear coat it one more time, and then it's going to sit uh, and cure overnight. I was saying earlier, I just am like so honored to do this. I absolutely love doing pieces that have meaning. Just having the opportunity to to help you convey your story, to be a part of it. It's just amazing to me.
<laughs> there we go. Get that stuff out of our way. <clears throat> I'm tempted to put this up here above the blood, sweat, and tears so that it's about equal from the bottom as the top is. Yeah, I think I like that as far as placement is concerned. Make sure that's really straight. We're committed now. <laughs> it's on there. Is it what you expected, Squid? Here we go. We're doing it. Not all who wander are lost. Well, I hope it's just as good. I hope it's just as good as you expected. Well, I don't know about you, but it definitely speaks to my heart. I'm not crying. I have glasses on. You can't see me. <laughs> you leave me alone. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much, Squid. I love this. I hope you love it too. Look at your, look at the dimension we got on that blood, sweat, and tears, by the way, once it dried. It looks like they fell onto the canvas. Like they made little puddles around them. Can you see it? Like little cloudy puddles. How cool is that? Yeah, it's good. It's good. We're going to get that clear coated. And we'll get that in the mail to you. And then you can have it forever and ever. Oh, I need this. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm going to sit here. 
and let that vinyl just stick because I just did the clear coat this evening and it's still um, tacky to the touch, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna let that sit and I may put the second coat on it in the morning before I go to work just to make sure that it's set long enough. But either way, we'll try and uh, probably get to post on Monday, I would think. Here, let's scoot you guys over here. Squid. I really, I'm so happy with the anchors and the ribbons, I can't even take it. Did we do the writing in black? Yes, that's a single cut. And that's a cut. All right. What's work? Dude, I can't even. Oh, look, I have to move you guys back over there because we have to, I have to pay for this too. Hang on. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, come back. <laughs> come back, come back. Yeah, I've, I've had enough work for a lifetime, I think. All right, so we want this in black. I've already got the black over there. And she wants a navy blue. So I think we're going to do that one right there. It looks kind of purple to me. It look kind of purple? No, it's definitely blue if you hold it up against purple. It's just dark. Hopefully it'll... to hold that color with what we've got going on. It should be fine. All right. We're going to get this one cut out. It's quarter to six. I had to slow myself down at the beginning of stream. And now I want to speed myself back up so I can get it all done today. What are we doing first? Black. when I'm done no one will be able to say I didn't try to do everything <laughs> I tried to do it all my whole life I did all the things is so st stupid sticky. Like working with the light grip mats is so much so much easier.
And then this guy. Okay. I think it'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right. Let's load up our little cricket here. Oh, I have the guides all moved because of chipboard. I suppose I could have moved them back. But, you know, whatever. All right. Let's hope this does a good job. Do a good job, Cricket. Got paint on my sweater, Got paint on my hands. <laughs> I'm a mess, and I can't see. I can't see what time it is. Oh, I got 15 minutes. I don't think we're gonna get it all done on screen. Definitely gonna get as much done tonight as I can. Got to spill my paints there. <sighs> so, I'm glad you got to see the end of it, Squint, so you could see like the whole thing being created. That's awesome. Makes me happy. I'm always glad to see you anyway. seriously considering putting a Captain America over the top of that first red, white, and blue pour I did yesterday. This one. I think it'd be really cool to have a Captain America silhouette standing right there in the middle of that. The Cinderella canvas isn't quite dry either, it's tacky as well. We'll get it all done. There's always tomorrow, right? It's always another day for me to art. I'm absolutely dying of thirst. I don't know if it's the weather or what. First part. This is her hair. And the saying that goes on this one is have courage and be kind. Which is also, I mean, both of these are just like. Great reminders, right? Mm -hmm. 
So it's going to be a nice blue. All right. Last piece. This piece is like a blue circle with her holding a shoe and stars coming up on it. feeling that peeling all of these little letters is not going to be as easy as I want it to be. We'll see how far I have to go before I have to cut this vinyl. And there's our blue done. This would probably be easier to peel first before end of stream so you guys can see what it's going to look like. We can do that. We'll do this one first. glasses. I need my glasses. Hey Lady Brittany. I'm really pleased with this blue actually. Oh I took the earring completely out of the blue didn't I?
There you go. This is what she's going to look like. Okay. Looks like Cinderella. I like it. All right. Creative Vets, I think we are going to wrap it up here. I'm going to put these, the black piece, which is her hair and her earring and then the wording all the way around here and get this placed on this canvas. So I will see you here uh, next Thursday, same time, which is 4 Eastern, my time. Um, and next week we will be working on a carnelian geode pour um, to continue working on that six part series that we now have halfway done. Thank you so much, Lady Brittany. I'm gonna go grab me some dinner and maybe uh, another little Gatorade because I'm dying of thirst. Um, so if, uh, if I don't see you here on Thursday, which I hope you do, uh, that I do see you here, uh, you might be able to catch me on Twitch as a Mrs. OEF5. Uh, and I appreciate y'all appreciate y'all for coming and sharing this with me. It's always wonderful. So I hope you guys have a great week, and I will see you soon. We are a nonprofit that is helping combat disabled veterans heal through the arts and music. Our art programs in Chicago and California help combat disabled veterans tell their story through art. We enroll them into the best art institutes in the country. We pay for their tuition, their housing, their food all three weeks so that they can finally tell their story through art. We also bring combat disabled veterans to Nashville, to places and rooms like this here at the Grand Old Opry to tell their story for the first time with pro songwriters all about the things that they went through that they've never been able to talk about before. These programs have been extremely successful in helping veterans combat their PTSD. Right now, Creative Ed's has more veterans applying for our programs than we do funding. So if you can go to creativeets.org and donate, we would appreciate it.